I think I have to um, place this very early in my life, uh, probably as a my eight or a ten year old, um, because I started uh, doing little experiments under the veranda of my parents' house, or experimenting with, with chemicals and all kinds of devices. And I didn't know that it was science that I was doing or pursuing. Uh, it was just uh, a completely native interest in, in the way things work. It went on from there. Um, and uh, when, I, uh, when I went to high school or gymnasium, as it is called in Germany, uh, physics was, was always my favorite subject matter. I always had a one in, in, in physics. And I went into the advanced courses. Um, so it was a, essentially a sort of a, a set deal for me uh, to go into the uh, direction of physics. Yeah, it's, it's, it's part of the same thing. It's a part of my mind. My mind is compartmentalized like this. And, and uh, I, I, I just see sort of the, the, these are parallel processes that are going on. And if I only uh, nurture one part of this, uh, then I feel uh, not, uh, not being whole. I'm, I'm not whole as a, as a person. So, so I, I, I have this really uh, urge to express myself in, in different places. And science itself is, is also somehow poor uh, in, in, in terms of uh, <clears throat> giving voice to emotions, uh, giving voice to a lot of humanity. So uh, it, is, uh, it, is, it is not a very uh, broad um, a platform to express myself as an individu individual. I think I would place it at the time when I was a student in Munich and I had a very good friend whom I met uh, through, uh, through, the through, uh, through the university. And we took, we took trips uh, together. We went to France and so on, and I had my camera with me. And I discovered my interest in, in, in uh, taking pictures of a very uh, you know, peculiar constellation of things. Uh, I mean, these can be uh, animated or not animated. Uh, the, the, the camera view uh, makes the, made them animated. Uh, it could be a you know a piece of grass uh, um, growing somewhere next to a post, and just uh, from from the way you look at it, all of a sudden it, it uh, gains uh, life. I was I was rewarded in in <clears throat> in a number of ways. Uh, I, I did some uh, regional exhibits. And, and got, um, I don't know whether I got prizes, but, but the, the, the fact that I that made it into these exhibits and, and got comments back uh, was, was already an, a reward for me. Well, I, I constantly take pictures. And, and then I, meanwhile, I'm, I'm using them in social media. Um, I, I have a blog. Uh, and, and, and sometimes I, I use an, an image to herald uh, what I write, and sometimes to juxtapose this to a text. You know, sometimes you can even take an image and put in completely unrelated text next to each other, and then sort of find out, find out that they still speak to each other, because our mind is really made to see connections. Well, I, I was born in 1940, and um, so the, the, year, uh, the, the war ended in 1945, but in 1944, I had a very traumatic experience that I can still remember because uh, my uh, parents' house was, was bombed, was firebombed. And uh, not only the, the roof of uh, our house, but also roofs of other houses uh, were on fire. And so I experienced this as a, as a little kid, and this is actually the first experience that I have. Uh, and, uh, and that has, has always been with me and has followed me into uh, dreams and nightmares uh, through, uh, through adolescence. 
not later on, but uh, it was a very determining factor. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure uh, how it, uh, how it um, exactly influenced uh, me. Uh, I, th there were certain traits that have always been uh, with me. Uh, one of them is that I have, an, have a horror at, and at the same time a fascination with, um, with uh, uh, buildings that, that have, have been turned into rubble. Uh, and the fascination comes from the fact that uh, as, a, as a little boy, I've been playing in these kinds of fields. Uh, I, I, turned, I turned stones around and found uh, uh, pieces, of, uh, pieces of electrical installation or I found a mouse nest, uh, th these kinds of things. So there's this fascination, but at the same time there's this horror uh, about uh, seeing this uh, complete uh, destruction. And, and so it's always been with me so when I uh, look at the, uh, <clears throat> at the cover of the New York Times and see uh, what happened in Syria, that, that uh, immediately caused me to recoil uh, because it really brings me way back in, into my early childhood. The other, th the other way it influenced me is, is that in the, um, in the post-war time, uh, it, we didn't have a lot to eat, and it was always, you know, there, were, there was the, this thing with real butter and, and margarine, and they were mixed together in certain proportions in order to get a little bit of the butter taste into the margarine. And <clears throat> all this, uh, the frugality of this has always been with me. When I see water running unnecessarily, I immediately, you know, I, I have the impulse to turn it off. Uh, all, all these these kinds of things, and I, I hoard. I'm a hoarder. I'm uh, hoarding things. Um, right now, I'm happy that I hoarded because these things all of a sudden became very valuable. <laughs> uh, but uh, so so this is the way it affected me, and and there's another way how how the whole um, Nazi time affected me, uh, which is really. Uh, confrontations with my father, particularly because you know he he, uh, he thought he had to choose uh, to become a a party member because he was a judge and maybe he he feared repercussions uh, in his profession if he if he didn't and you know there were all kinds of questions that came up later on you know how could you and and so so forth so there were uh, constant discussion and. They were revived every year in different guises, in different forms. I've, I've been very vocal in, in the recent upheaval in, in America. Uh, I think it is a despicable situation uh, that we have now. And uh, I've, been, I've been simply very outspoken there. Uh, so many of my tweets were really about, about these uh, subjects. And I don't particularly like to be part of that discussion, but but I, I, I just feel as a, as a human being, I, I need to I need to speak up. Um, well, the, the standing, I think, is very high. It is <clears throat> it is just that that all of a sudden uh, a percep perception was nourished among some part of the populace that, that science was not based on, on facts. Uh, and unfortunately, there have been, you know, maybe a very small percentage of, of uh, incidents in, in which uh, the scientific method was misapplied and, and uh, misrepresented uh, in publications. And each time this happens, uh, it, it becomes somehow an, a, an, <clears throat> an example for these people to, to question the entire foundation of science. And uh, this happens at a very pernicious moment uh, in, in time because we absolutely need to address uh, the uh, 
climate change. Uh, we, we, we know how to address it, uh, but, but since it coincides with the, with the whole uh, questioning of, uh, of the scientific method, uh, it, it's, a, uh, <clears throat> it's, a very, um, it's a very difficult moment. And, and I think, um, on the whole, this can only be addressed uh, by uh, much more outreach um, in education. And I know that uh, in Sweden, uh, this outreach is, is really exemplary. Uh, but it's not so in, in the United States and many other countries. Uh, so a lot can be done in this way. And, and I myself, I open myself always to inquiries or, or, or to requests uh, from, from high schools uh, to, uh, to give presentations. And I welcome uh, very gifted high school students early on in the career uh, in, into the lab. Um, and so uh, I, I think everybody should, should do the same uh, in order to spread out uh, the, the knowledge of what, what we are really doing. What do I learn from them? Uh, well, I, I essentially I become aware of the fact that they uh, are much more mature, uh, much, much earlier than, than we are used to. Uh, they, they, they are trained in, in very fast uh, thinking uh, through uh, social media, through, through all the tools that are available now, and, and all they need is, is direction. Uh, they need, they need uh, direction, they need excitement uh, uh, for, of a, um, they need some kind of a motivation to, uh, to, to, find, to find stability. Uh, right now, I, I see that there are a lot uh, torn uh, around uh, in different directions. And um, in part, uh, that also has something to do with what you brought up before, with the, with the truth, the idea of truth. Uh, we, we can no longer... Um, find out what, what is truthful on the internet. Um, we, we are sort of, um, as a, a young person in particularly, uh, particularly will not um, know uh, what, is, uh, what is true and, and what, is, what is wrong, um, a, because there is no standard provided. And I find it interesting that in, in uh, northern Italy, there is an uh, initiative uh, in high schools. Uh, there are classes provided for people to find out what is, you know, how do they, how do they find out uh, through their own minds uh, what, what is possibly right and what's possibly wrong on, on the internet. And, and these kinds of things we might need need to have. We, we might need, need uh, special tools now. Um, like sex education at, at, at another time, okay? You know, to <clears throat> put people into the world without sex education is a crime. And, and here, it, it's, a, it's the same thing. I was sort of half asleep and half awake because we were worried about our dog. Our dog has been, had been waking us up uh, around that time. And so I was worried it was going to be the dog again, but this time it was the, no <laughs> the Nobel Committee. Yeah. Oh, it was, uh, it was pretty um, uh, overwhelming, and, and I, couldn't, I couldn't really find uh, the, the right kind of words. You know, I had the urge to be very sophisticated in my answer, and, and uh, all I could say was, you know, this is wonderful, this is wonderful. <laughs> well, it, it, it changed uh, quite a bit, uh, because there have been so many uh, media requests for interviews, uh, there were requests for information, for, for pictures. Um, there were so many 
congratulations from everywhere, from uh, every corner of the world, and uh, from families and friends, uh, also from many people that had never heard from, 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 for, for a long time, and then from strangers, from absolute strangers that just happened to uh, live in the same area in Germany, uh, yeah, these kinds of things. So it's really, uh, it's, been, it's been sort of a non-stop. You know, I can, I can think of, of my life entering a new phase, a new phase of, of uh, maybe uh, completely new projects um, and also a phase in which I, I'm, I can afford to relax and, and, and write books and things like this. So I, I can... I, I see. I see uh, the rest of my life open for a lot of explorations that uh, um, I can do much easier than than I could do before. It's an acknowledgement that that I I sort of join different kind of ranks, and it, there's a comfortable feeling about it, but also an uncomfortable feeling about it. You know, it's a feeling of guilt. Uh, that you know, I, I, I should I should not be in this position. You know, there's something, uh, uh, you know, something must have gone wrong here with judgments. You know, because there are so many people that I know uh, are are deserving of of of, of this honor, and uh, I know about the difficulties of making these kinds of judgments especially because there are only three people that can be selected. But, but in this particular, um, this particular category, this year, I think people were very happy in the community with this kind of uh, um, choice of, of the three people. And I think this, I, I got the same feedback from, from the other two. I know very well, I, I've been... Um, I, I um, met them very many many times in uh, con uh, conferences. Sometimes I, we invited uh, each other uh, to give presentations. We never collaborated. Um, I think my first encounter with uh, Richard Anderson goes back into the uh, late 70s. Uh, there were particular conferences which brought together protein crystallographers with electron microscopists. Uh, they were uh, co-organized by Max Perutz and, and Walter Hoppe. Walter Hoppe was my mentor. Max Perutz, you, you know very well. Yeah, yeah in my field, um, you know, I looked up to, uh, to Aaron Klug, um, and he, together with David Durassier, who is here, um, did the first 3D reconstruction from electron microscopy. Um, and uh, Aaron Klug um, was a single one who, who got a Nobel Prize uh, in, in chemistry. Uh, but it was jointly for three-dimensional reconstruction as well as um, the structure of the nucleosome. Uh, so it was sort of divided between the two. Um, then, um, of course, the inventor for, of the microscope, uh, the electron microscope, uh, Ernst Ruska, he, he got the Nobel Prize almost as an afterthought. Uh, it, it was really embarrassing because <clears throat> the decision was made to give the prize to the atomic force microscopy. And then he, he was simply added on as, as a third person. Uh, <clears throat> even though his invention, you know, came, went back uh, 19, 1931. And atomic force microscopy, in my opinion, was, was overrated and uh, has it, it, it receded to a niche, uh, meanwhile. But the transmission electron microscopy really flourishes, as you, as you see. And then, of course, um, the, the prize uh, that, that uh, I was touched by was uh, the one for the ribosome structure because I've been working on the ribosome uh, quite a bit and uh, also uh, the 
cryo-electron microscopy uh, in my lab has made a contribution to, to the X-ray structure itself, to the phasing of the X-ray structure, as acknowledged by Tom Stites. So uh, the, the prize in 2009 to Ada Jonath, uh, Venkir Ramakrishnan, and Tom, uh, Thomas Stites uh, was something that sort of emotionally uh, uh, touched me because uh, somehow, you know, I, I thought, well, you know, uh, I, I did some contribution to the ribosome and maybe I could have been part of the club if, if the club had been four. You can take me high. 